Fantasy Stakes is the female counterpart to the Arkansas Derby. It's an Oaks prep. Uh, it's a grade three run at the uh, at Oaklawn on Saturday in the 11th race. It's a run at a mile and a 16th for three-year-old fillies. And I think this is a really good betting race. Uh, it's a pretty balanced field. Uh, probably West Omaha. I don't have the uh, morning line yet, but uh, I'll assume West Omaha will probably be the chalk. Uh, kind of a disappointing effort in the Honey Bee, but uh, did demonstrate at fairgrounds that this one can run. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, from the Honey Bee, Lemon Muffin, of course, who uh, stunned with a break in her maiden, uh, running at a route for the first time. Tappet Janali, who had a pretty good second, um, as well as, uh, uh, who, who am I missing here? Uh, <laughs> in Just My Heels and Midshipman's Dance as well. Uh, we've got some new shooters. My Main Squeeze coming from New York, from Mike Maker. Uh, all Things Go, who just broke her maiden uh, pretty impressively. Where's My Ring coming in from California? And then we've got uh, Badi Ya, who's uh, running second off the layoff. Recharge and Candy Isle coming from Sunland. Uh, and Thorpedo Anna coming off the bench, who uh, we haven't seen since the Goldenrod. So uh, we've got a lot of uh, diverse field, to say the least. And I think this is a really good betting race because uh, it's pretty well balanced. We'll take a look at them one at a time. In Just My Heels run an improved effort in the Honey Bee and had to duel two different times down the stretch. And I thought kept on pretty well, despite having to do all the heavy lifting on the front end. Ran an improved race over her prior. And I think this is a horse who's pretty good and looks to be getting better. But uh, the presence of where my Where's My Ring, I think, compromises her chances greatly. Uh, Where's My Ring is coming in from California with some pretty gaudy p uh, speed numbers, but the big issue with, with her, I think, is that she doesn't manage her speed well. You know her early, but you don't know her late. Um, I think that'll probably compromise the chances of in just my heels. Uh, Where's My Ring, I, I think, will likely go to the lead, but I don't expect to be there late, so consequently, I'm going to toss the two of them. Uh, Buddy Ya is what you like to see. Uh, from my friend Tom Amos is a horse coming off the bench after a, a fair layoff since January and ran a career high. Uh, always love to see that with three-year-olds. Perhaps uh, she's grown into herself a little more. The light bulb has gone off, but ran a really solid race and much improved. And I think it's logical to expect this one to springboard forward with a better race. Uh, running closer to the pace will tactically give her a pretty good edge over some of the later runners who were more prominent, like West Omaha. And uh, I really like Badi Ya to spring the upset in this race. Recharge is coming from Sunland for Steve Asperson and is a gun runner. Uh, two turns, I don't think will be an issue. But uh, you can't like a horse terribly much running it out of uh, Sunland in, uh, where the class level is pretty suspect. And for those of you who say, well, you know, what about Lucky Jeremy in the... Uh, the Jeff Ruby, yeah, okay, but was that really that great a race to be, let's be honest, uh, and was no threat to endlessly. So uh, recharge to me, um, maybe it doesn't look like it's got a big move forward in her as well, so I'm going to pass, and probably the price will be short because of Steve Asperson, and I don't want her. Tepa Ginelli, I thought, ran a pretty good second and is a horse that is improving, but I just have a sneaky suspicion she's a cut below uh, some of the better runners here. Um, I think it's it's logical to assume that she'll factor in this race, but I don't see that big move forward uh, to take her over the top here. So underneath would be the extent of my interest. Lemon Muffin certainly surprised, <laughs> but, you know, breaking her maiden first time around two turns in the graded stakes. Uh, the coach pulled a fast one there. Uh, he did mention, and it makes perfect sense if you think about it, that uh, he had handicapped her a little bit by running her in sprints for a while. So uh, obviously getting around two turns with her pedigree was what the doctor ordered, and she took advantage of it, ran a really nice race. Um, no reason to believe that she won't be there again, and um, provided she doesn't regress, uh, I fully expect her to be a contender in here. Uh, the price will be a little short for me, but... Uh, Again, I you know I think in this race certainly she's one to be considered, particularly since uh, her forward running style will uh, will be a help. My main squeeze is got some question marks to her. 
Uh, she's, first of all, only been running against New York breads, and she hasn't run again around two turns. However, the big positives for her are that Mike Maker is great at stretching horses out, and she's by Audible. So two turns should be just what the doctor ordered. Uh, I think my main squeeze is a prime player in here. Her speed numbers uh, are better than most of those in here. And provided she takes the two turns, which I don't think will be a problem at all, uh, I think my main squeeze can factor in this race. I just kind of think body, yeah, uh, I like a little bit better. That's all. But my main squeeze is a, is a hard use for me. All Things Go is kind of breaking some rules for me. Uh, she, I don't like taking horses going into a graded stakes race, going a route for the first time uh, after a maiden win where she really didn't, she beat an okay field, not a great one. It was the way she did it though. Uh, I really liked the way she drew off, just uh, showed some really nice acceleration and uh, it's a tall order. There's no question about it, but you're going to get a nice price in, in this field. Uh, you know, a lot of times horses can freak going a route for the first time. She is by outwork and, um, you know, we saw with bright work and it's a little questionable two turns, but, uh, I think in this one, I got to find some value. So I'll throw her in the mix and, uh, we'll just hope for the best. Candy Isle couldn't beat recharge and we don't like recharge. So that's a a, a, a toss coming from Sunland. Sorry, New Mexico people. Uh, Todd Fincher is a nice trainer. And uh, we saw it with Senior Buscador where he finally got a big win for him. And, and he's, he's a good man. So I was, I was happy to see that. But I don't think uh, Candy Isle was good enough here. So she's a pass. Torpedo Anna is the, uh, the venerable Kenny McPeak stakes entrant. Uh, now, she showed a hell of a lot early for her first two races. They took her back. And she finished with authority for two races around one turn. They moved her to two turns, had every chance in the golden rod, and just weakened in the stretch. I don't think she really wants two turns being by fast Anna. Coming off the bench, uh, I, th I have a feeling Kenny McPeak's going to just take her back for that one run. He loves to do that in stakes races. We see it over and over again. But... I think her pedigree is against her in this race, and I think the price will be short. I don't want her. I'm letting her go. Midshipman's Dance, we liked in the Honey Bee, and I didn't think ran a bad race, but flattened out in the stretch, had every chance right next to West Omaha, and just couldn't uh, couldn't get the job done. Uh, I think this horse maybe is class challenged a little bit, uh, and um, it looks to have uh, didn't did, ran a, a decent race, but didn't take a move forward necessarily. So uh, I, I don't want her in this spot. I'm going to let her go. West Omaha, I can't really figure out, to be honest. Uh, I didn't like her for the Honey Bee. I thought she had plateaued, and I it looks like maybe she has. Her late fraction has decreased for three straight races. Not appreciably, but enough to tell you that maybe it, the, the waters are getting a little deep or... Uh, she's just plateauing uh, ability-wise. If there's something wrong, of course, Brad Cox is going to fix it. We saw him do that with Catching Freedom, and I could certainly see West Omaha factoring here, but I have some reservations after that last race, and uh, I don't want her at that short a price. Now, I'm going to keep her in the mix, but I think underneath is probably more likely um, we'll have a little bit of pace to run to. There's some things to like, and there's, there's certainly reasons to use West Omaha, but I'm going to try to beat her uh, with Badia. Yeah. I just uh, like her chances. She has more upside to me at this point. So if we look at our wagering strategy, I think this is a good betting race, so I'm going to look for value. I'm going with Badia. Yeah. Uh, I want four to one or better if I'm going to better across the board. I have a feeling I'm going to get it. And uh, I like her chances. We're going to keep box her with 1, 4, and 11. We'll throw in all things go. And uh, if lightning strikes, we'll get, uh, uh, we'll get paid. And then uh, I'm going to box my main squeeze and body. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can double up. I could certainly see doing the same with lemon muffin if you choose. Or you can just go 1, 6, 11 exact the box for the double up. Uh, I think that's extremely logical too. 
For the trifecta, we're going to go six with one, four, 11, with one, four, eight, 10, and 11, uh, and plant our flag. I think you need value in this race. I do not think it's, uh, it's classically form fitting. And um, I think horses up near the lead are, are going to get a tactical jump on some of the late runners. And uh, if Where's My Ring does her thing, then they'll be sitting right there when she starts backing up with uh, uh, the other early runners who, who can't factor in this race. So uh, we're going we're gonna to go for body odd and hope for the best. Uh, but there are other options, certainly, uh, if you, with, I think, Lemon Muffin in particular or My Main Squeeze.